welcome to the PV Tech Newscast. The lead stories this week. Mega projects make up 68% of the 95 gigawatt global project pipeline. The utility scale storage market will exceed $2.5 billion by 2023. Sun Edison target project finance worth an annual $15 billion. A restructured solar world reveals slashed debt, targeting a profit for next year. And REC Solar plan module capacity expansion, taking them up to 1.3 gigawatts. PV projects in excess of 50 megawatts now represent 68% of the global project pipeline. However, their enormous scale means they may not be the most interesting segment for developers. According to the latest NPD SolarBuzz Global Deal Tracker report, the top PV markets now have a project pipeline of 95 gigawatts. Now, although more than two-thirds of this is made up of the 500 largest plants, it's the mid-scale market that could be more appealing to suppliers and developers as smaller projects up to 5 megawatts can typically be approved and completed within a matter of months. There are now 4,300 yet-to-be-completed projects between 250 kilowatts and 5 megawatts. The report considers the top PV markets to be China, Japan, India, Thailand, Australia, Germany, UK, Italy, France, Canada and the US, accounting for 80% of the expected PV demand in the next five years. China, Japan and the US are out in front with 65 gigawatts of the 95 gigawatt pipeline. NPD SolarBuzz expects the trio to install 24 gigawatts of utility scale and commercial solar in 2014. The utility scale energy storage market will exceed 2.5 billion US dollars in revenue by the year 2023, according to forecasting by Navigant Research, the research arm of consultancy Navigant. The firm has published the report Advanced Batteries for Utility Scale Energy Storage, which includes analysis and forecasts of the global market for battery technologies. These technologies include lithium iron, sodium metal halide, sodium sulfur, flow batteries, advanced lead acid, and others. In the report, Navigant predicts that from being an industry worth $164 million in 2014, revenues from utility-scale storage will hit the $2.5 billion mark and go beyond it by 2023. The firm argues that advances currently being made in electrochemistry are enabling grid management through batteries, which until recently would have been unthinkable due to concerns over safety, cost, durability and efficiency. The use of electrical energy storage to accommodate new renewable energy capacity onto grid networks is being investigated in various regions. Large-scale flow battery experiments are being conducted in the UK and in Japan, while regulators in Puerto Rico and the US states of Hawaii and California have become among the first to mandate the use of energy storage on grids. The report examines business cases such as that for ancillary services to grids including frequency regulation, bad shifting and peak shaving, as well as cloud mitigation for solar and providing ramping capacity for wind power. Navigant asserts that the highest growth in advanced battery use over the next 10 years will occur in the Asia-Pacific region, with North America and Europe also likely to see strong growth. Lithium iron is the clear market leader at present, according to Navigant Research, able to offer the best all-round mix of qualities. However, other battery chemistries still offer potential solutions for different applications. Lead acid batteries are suitable for power intensive uses, while flow batteries using chemistries such as vanadium redox are particularly suited to long-term storage applications. A recent report by rival firm IHS forecast the grid-connected energy storage market to exceed 40 gigawatts globally by 2022, while GTM research has forecast that over 700 megawatts of commercial storage will be deployed in the USA alone between 2014 and 2020. Major PV energy provider Sun Edison is planning to grow its PV project business to a scale that would require up to $15 billion a year in project finance capital. The company says this would be fueled through tapping public capital markets via its yield co vehicles as well as debt and equity deals. Management noted in a conference call to discuss fourth quarter 2013 financial results that the company had a strategic plan to be a leader in the downstream PV project business on a global basis and cover utility, commercial and residential markets. According to Sun Edison's management, the recent plan to initiate its first Yield Co. financial vehicle had already generated a lot of interest from the likes of sovereign wealth funds. Although management would not say what the first Yield Co. value would be due to the confidentiality of agreements, the retained value of projects could indicate the value range of its first Yield Co. 
Management also noted that it would continue to retain projects on its balance sheet throughout 2014, though they did not provide further details. However, the company reiterated that it still planned to have a quarterly run rate of PV project completions totaling around 200 megawatts. Beleaguered module manufacturer SolarWorld has announced the conclusion of its financial restructuring and confirmed that its debt now stands at 427 million euros or 587 million dollars. The company released a statement confirming that the debt for equity swap was complete along with the investment from Qatar Solar Technologies, which has taken a 29% stake in the company. With their debt now reduced by 57%, SolarWorld is looking to concentrate on a return to profit, with CFO Philip Coker describing the company as being on firm financial footing. The intentions of SolarWorld's new Qatari investor are not clear. There has been speculation that the country has both PV manufacturing and deployment ambitions. SolarWorld continues to be under the spotlight for its role in international trade disputes, with its latest petition in the US being referred to the Department of Commerce. You can find out more about that in previous editions of this newscast. Running at full capacity and benefiting from the weakness of remaining European module manufacturing competitors in Europe, REC Solar is planning to expand capacity by 1 gigawatt this year and by a further 300 megawatts in 2015 to meet demand. The company expects to undertake module assembly line de-bottlenecking in the first quarter of 2014 at its fab in Singapore to provide a full year PV module capacity of 940 megawatts and a nameplate capacity of 1 gigawatt, up from 820 megawatts at the end of 2013. These efforts would mean that little additional capital expenditure would be required this year. The balance between ingot wafer and solar cell capacity would remain roughly in balance with the module expansion plans at the facility, according to the company. Management said that it would source solar cells from Taiwan in the meantime to meet the increase in module capacity, therefore keeping capital spending low. REC Solar expects to increase internal wafer capacity to 840 megawatts by the first half of 2015. REC noted that it expected market demand for its modules to remain strong in 2014, citing the recent global market forecast by NPD SolarBuzz that installations would reach 49 gigawatts in 2014, up from around 35 gigawatts in 2013. And that's all for this edition of the newscast. Make sure to tune in next Tuesday, and in the meantime you can keep up to date with all the very latest news via our website and our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching.